следующего выступающего докладчика. Большая честь, всемирно известный шаман и горлопев. И в этом году был первый фестиваль в мире международный до 13 шаманов. И теперь он поделится посланиями, которые он услышал от шаманов мира. Спасибо. I'm most honored to be uh, talking to you today. I cover in my artistic performances uh, various directions, many spheres. I teach how to intuitively play their musical instruments and also how to, to study and learn the voices of nature, animals and birds. I also uh, teach uh, breathing techniques. And how to use your uh, voice as an instrument, as a tool. And I also awaken your spirit to uh, wake up your consciousness and to achieve balance and harmony. It all uh, is touched upon strongly in shamanism. And sh uh, in Tuga, shamanism is widespread. We're a small population in the Republic of Tuga, just 420,000 people. And in ancient times, shamanism was uh, more widespread. Buddhism came to us in the 19th century. And before the Buddhist teachers, uh, teachings and ashrams and temples, uh, there was shamanism only. And, and at one time, in the, in the beginning of the 20th century, shamanism had a great influence on the population of Tuba. Like in each village or settlement, there were two or three shamans born, born especially in Siberia and in Tuba. That is why the shamans they not only guided their peoples, but they also did private consultations and sessions. And the shamans could heal all the soul loss or any other ailments or sicknesses. When there were uh, Buddhist monks, they started addressing to the spirits of the mountains, forests, and waters just as shamans re re chanting their mantras. They were uh, communicating with the spirits. Of course, uh, the first transition period, there was uh, many conflicts between the Buddhists and the shamanists. But, but the high priests, the monks, uh, were pretty uh, uh, cool and okay with the sh shamans, but shamans were jealous sometimes, of course. And during the uh, uh, period of the USSR, the Soviet period, the, there was a law introduced 
all the religions were suppressed, including sh shamanism. Like how the shamans against send a, a person to the uh, skies, you know, they were even executed and uh, trialed in courts. There were fees and penalties introduced to still the people retained their sh shamanistic beliefs it was their intrinsic nature and in modern times people are more aware about the basics of the shamanism what it, it's all about Yes, and uh, currently in Tsuva, uh, shamanism and Buddhism are two uh, equal religions. And they're uh, almost like a, a common whole. <coughs> It's not the God that shamanism worships, but uh, the master of the skies, of the heavens, the Tengri religion. We uh, much worship uh, the sky spirits. Uh, we read the stars and the planets, the constellations, and uh, we worship waters. Uh, also uh, use uh, stones to uh, tell fortune, to say what the spirits want. And the spirits and humans are the same. The shamans can just uh, delve into the other worlds and uh, consult the spirits there, even evil spirits, and fight them. And then they bring the knowledge to treat the human soul. But it's the, this interaction, this circle, which is uh, eternal. And of course, it's hard to decipher in these uh, flames in the underworld what are the mystical creatures or animals. It's all very interesting. The people who are corrupted get into hell, into the underworld. And even shamans who are not proficient would have difficult times operating in the underworld. But there's this uh, uh, shamanic lineage heritage where people try to foster the lighter uh, size of their aspects of their soul. In the, in the middle world, you have to develop your consciousness. Yes, it's a very intertwined and complex world. But uh, the souls are developed, uh, they evolve on Earth. So we have more enlightened beings, humans, that would teach and guide us. So it's all connected. And it's all about creating balance between the three worlds, the upper world, the middle world, and the underworld. That's what the shamans are needed for. And I even f uh, fight the spirits myself, the evil spirits, so the struggles are hard. And, and the upper world, whatever people do, and the real world, the highest aspirations and wishes, they go up 
to the upper world. If you wish something good, it goes to the upper uh, world, to the collective consciousness for the enlightenment of all. And as you may see, it's like a cloud overhanging us and controlling us, the humans as well, soul and spirit. And uh, these uh, knowledge falls in us, uh, the earthly beings, to be more responsible. So this is just the essence of what the Tavinian shamanism is about. And when you do this uh, therapeutic dance with the client, with the patient, you make the energies move, you uh, call on the animal helpers, spirits, to get as much support as you need. And uh, this is the main mission of the shaman. This is what the treatment is all about. Uh, the art, the essence of shamanism, or a shaman, is, is his or her creative work. By using your spirits, you strive to make the pa uh, uh, you uh, teach the patient to self-heal by words, actions. Everyone can do that. You can dance. You can whisper. I do er all things. Even. If you whisper to a patient, you see the trembling, uh, the changes. Even uh, a silent, a whispered word has a strong force. You are your own temple, and you are the master of that temple of your actions. And you should strive for that higher knowledge. And you may just be sitting near the patient, breathing, helping to establish a certain common breathing rhythm. And that's how a person, a patient is healed. I see where the dark or ailing spots are. I am become one with the patient. We're not fractured, we become one. We interchange our energies. That is why it's much required a deep understanding what the, the consciousness spirit is, the mind, and try to unite them. And that's how you expand and change time and space. Uh, simply by chance, I've become a shamanism. I was a director of the uh, local public cultural center, then a director of the theater uh, during the communist times. Like they were asking me to provide trucks with fuel and uh, spare parts to organize a concert somewhere in the remote village. I had to settle all these logistical issues then. And I wasn't even responsible to find the artists on the spot to join me for the performance, for the concert. But it was so difficult. You had to consult the party, communist party authorities to uh, procure all these spare parts and fuel. And suddenly I started singing in a low voice like this. And me and the members of my uh, theatrical troupe started for a year this training, voice training. 
We had a uh, group, a singing uh, vocal group called uh, the Etuva Ensemble. And we thought, okay, we might uh, try it out and maybe we'll be world famous and uh, tour the world. And I was like uh, uh, designated as a, as a stage shaman initially. I had to play a shaman uh, on stage and uh, sing all these so songs and I had to learn all the moves, uh, the chants, the dances. But, but, but you know what, once you uh, get a hold of it, uh, you start to get a feel and act of it and you really become a shaman. Like you can feel the wave, the animal spirits coming at you. And they're telling you many things. And for example, in former ancient times, the shamans had uh, uh, shamanic journeys for three days, uh, song sessions. Of course, nowadays we don't have that much time. I'm here sitting in my hotel room and just whispering or trying to throw sing. And then. Yeah, like uh, uh, the, the troop remained. I tried to heal my own head. I had headaches. I, but I, I was uh, invited first time to the United States, to America as a shaman. And uh, I uh, do talks how shamans are born how they emerge. The system doesn't have to suppress this natural process. Like uh, each child is born with its own energy. You can become a shaman as an adolescent, as an adult. The shamanic illness can strike you anytime. But you should be open, like be in this Kundalini state. Uh, state. A shaman as a mirror a so of a person's soul. Yes, there is a lineage, of course, some inborn natural abilities if you had some ancestors with such. If you laugh, if you dance, it can all be revealed. Some people, such people were placed in mental hospitals. Because if such a person is not uh, prepared, then they just uh, get mad. But this is like the spontaneous shamanic illness, which is uh, inherited. For, for example, even my son is a very proficient in massage, which just came from Krasnoyarsk in Siberia. Like he's overtaking my energies, my teachings for me. I teach him a lot. I am also a hereditary shaman because another shaman who was um, like a bone fixer, he told me how to open up my energies. I was trembling at first. I had tre tremors too, and when I, I addressed him, he told me how to treat myself. Of course, you must have this interflow, exchange of energies, otherwise any treatment is not possible. It should be a uh, two-side communication. I should note that shamanism is becoming more widespread and popular in the world than, say, 20 years ago. 
But I, I think it's due to the higher uh, consciousness of the humanity that shamans are sending some knowledge to the public. Yes, there are many shamans existing today, an ocean of them. And each uh, indigenous culture has its own intricacies and uh, variations, but I was very much pleased to see this diversity and this interflux, uh, the mix uh, produces wonderful results when we exchange experience, knowledge, teachings, how we dance, how we sing. And we also uh, need interchange, even uh, shamanic meetings nowadays, no wonder. Of course, we're a uh, country to the politicians, we're not for controlling the world. We just want to show our people how we live, how ordinary people should structure and organize their lives to uh, get the energies in balance, not to get ill, and how to uh, produce and give birth to healthy children. For example, young people don't know how to do it. They don't know how to accept this heavenly light. How do you teach like family relationships? That's a science on its own. How, how to treat each other, how to bring up ch children. I tell you, usually, usually tell couples that, uh, that you must become enlightened and just uh, uh, produce good kids, better than you were. Yes, we can build airplanes and rockets, but we should be producing mindful uh, new people, our children. That's the higher creativity, your inner state, your inner self. And there's, this is what the upper mission is all about. How do you produce such conscious or unconscious uh, conscientious um, beings? A path, path to shamanism is like getting the knowledge from the plants, from the trees. You journey and you travel, sit in taiga, talk to the stones, and expand your mind, talk to them. Okay, some of the scripts are written by very wise religious people. In shamanism, there's uh, not much of uh, written sources, and there are no bads, but there are ta taboos, of course, which are in the traditional culture, but the taboos, they uh, uh, guide you along your life. Would you be eating? Stones, yes, as a shaman, I may be eating up stones. I can even digest them, but not you. So that's where self-healing and uh, a greater knowledge comes from. What? would happen uh, for, for in future, like the last festival, why it was called Call of the Thirteen Shamans. We had uh, 12 uh, uh, people in the group and my uh, musical theater. I was a 13th shaman, you know, a stage shaman. That's where the name came for, uh, from for the festival, the International Shaman. So it's how we look at the world, at the stars. 
And uh, in 2019, uh, from June 25th to the 30th, I think uh, a new uh, festival will take place in Turu as well. And I call upon all other uh, shamans of the world who want to share the indigenous knowledge, the teachings of their people. And I usually uh, do uh, a vision quest for all the shamans. I send them for three days uh, with no food, and no drink, and no water, high up into the mountains. They come up back to the people and tell about their visions. And then they tell uh, the participants of the festival what visions they had. They share their knowledge. Yes, they can even uh, dream up their insights. And they even dance up in the mountains and the hills. But people are forbidden to contact or access while they do their vision quest. And shamans can do whatever they like to attend, uh, uh, to attain uh, such visions, to see the future for the humanity. And what will happen in the next 60 years in Russia? How will we will be bringing up uh, and giving birth to children? Maybe we'll get some guidance here too. So for three days they're doing uh, the vision quest of shamans. Then, then they come back from the mountains and they talk around the campfires between themselves and talk to the uh, festival participants. And I encourage them to speak to the ordinary people to share the knowledge and teachings. And at first it was uh, quite uh, hard to organize such festivals, but now the word spread and uh, we're getting more interesting uh, participants and shamans as well. And as for the evolved, uh, personal uh, involvement or evolution of the shamans, I cannot say here each uh, shaman is unique. But the thing is that you have to keep the ball rolling, as they say. Who knows what uh, insights your knowledge will get? The world is awaiting for it. It's like a world theater, a stage which gives you new opportunities. Of course, it's a very natural state for us as shamans. <coughs> and I think that the role of shamanism and the more enlightened future will be even growing more. <laughs> And I'm even afraid that maybe even aliens would be helping us or interfering. I wouldn't know. I just want to tell you that the spirits of water for say, we can dance all night at the campfire and dancing just to even cleanse the water, for example, if it was polluted by garbage a lake, say, and you give structure, the program for the this body of water, can you imagine? And the, uh, the water, we, the earth, breathe together, we're one. And we cannot just go instantly to another planet and settle it until we learn on this earth to treat it right. 
don't get uh, engulfed by different or wrong causes. The nature will teach us this uh, code, this universal language. If you're ready to talk with the water, you're ready to be alive and to live as a proper human being. If you don't know the water code, forget it. For, for example, there were many famous Russian explorers like Mikluch and Maklai. They went to indigenous uh, cultures to Papua New Guinea to learn. When we conceive a child, a woman, you have to do it right. Start right. Start the life right. Like yesterday, you change your heart or something changes in your body. Maybe your brain will evolve tomorrow. We are changing. We are living creatures, even our consciousness. Our mind we have to be dancing carefully in this direction to get it right and to communicate more. Thank you very much for your attention. A few words about the, the shamanic throat singing and the songs, like uh, you awaken the world, it's like a, a projection of your inner world. Like if a person is blocked, you wouldn't be able to sing, right? So through the mantras, for the chants, we open up, expand our consciousness and heal our bodies. That is why you breathe one for the world and use your breathing. And see how I uh, study the breathing techniques. At one time I realized I'm not using my lips properly. Then I noticed how I should be tastefully shaping my voice. I was pleased with that. <laughs> yes, just try try this exercise just a bit. See, you're using a uh, breathing in, breathing out. <laughs> See, it's just all about lips and your breathing. And when you get it, you're great. And if your nasal passages are blocked, this uh, throat singing helps to open it. Like in the morning when you're all cloggy and groggy. Maybe you were sleeping in a wrong pillow or something. Your nostrils are closed. And then your mind cannot attain any enlightenment. You're feeling bad. Your head should be always cool, never asleep on a too soft or warm pillow. That is why the Japanese never had the soft pillows. They were smart. And see my breathing, watch it. 
See? I breathe in and breathe out with the same strength. See our blockages and fears are in this uh, mouth area. <laughs> maybe you're afraid you're blocked up because of your fear. If you're not relaxed, you won't be able to sing in this manner. Yeah, and our bodies get accustomed to this, you know, rigid, uh, unnatural state. And they are closed in, even relax your che cheeks, huh? See? Try to create your own inner song inside of yourself. See, you can produce a solo sound generated. You don't even have to uh, stress your voice. It's almost like speaking, natural speaking. This is the magic of the voice. are gone. Your face is even lighter. See? That's what I pass on to people. Thank you very much for your attention. У нас есть время, осталось на часть вопросов и ответов. Микрофон в зал, пожалуйста. My question to Alexander Osher, Nikolai Osher. Which we in now word current call shamans. Is that right from your point of view? Or is shaman is a heritage not in transpersonal sense, but the heritage from teachers who transfer the knowledge and experience but not teaching from one person to another person. And people who without this uh, information from teachers, from knowledge, maybe they should call themselves not shamans, or maybe everybody are shamans. I think that the name is not the most important thing. Shaman is a common name. We call shamans even people who just sit and uh, the spirit of stone and, and uh, space and they just start speaking, talking. Uh, it's not about calling shaman or not. If inside you you feel that you are shaman, you are. and the, if stone is, has spirit, 
it's possible to use the spirit of stone. And uh, being in communication, open-minded, shaman or not shaman, it's not important. But important is what's inside. And the sound is the main thing. The sound is a creature of God. And if we have sound in the in Y scale, we can have sounds of different animals, plants. That's why I think if you can develop yourself, then you can step the right way and person becomes shaman. Shaman is shamanism based on the contact with plants and animals. If a person communicates, we have uh, the communication with spirits. And, and the communication with spirits of earth and plants and other spirits. You can call them shaman as well. And this is the process of communication with spirits of tree, for example. I even, in night, I was sitting by a tree and it is opening and you can communicate, it's not clear at the beginning. But then you start seeing that something grows and every leaf gives you energy and power and the moon helps you and tree in the night and it opens and the earth elevates and the power comes up up the tree and we are talking and the situation, the condition is developing. It is not so important to bow. If you don't want, it's not important. Just to develop the, the mind, open mind. That's why you need dialogue with nature. следующий вопрос николай could you please tell most interesting experience in process of your shaman being sounds the the most powerful impression Oh, well, the most striking experience as a chairman I had in treating uh, patients and healing them is, uh, I don't know, it's a song perhaps, but I don't uh, hear all the voices around us in the universe. But I see some people, my patients, as a clear sound, as a transcendental sound. I can see them. And uh, people are just so touched. Even some of them break up in tears. 
Исти, искренная сила, истинная сила, каким so, образом uh, появляется, каким образом человек принимает, это тоже загадочное состояние. How it comes up on you, that's so magical. And it's all about ways, the sound should be so clear, that is striking. You cannot sound well if you're sick or ill. You have to be clean and cleansed. That is why I cannot tell you what was my best shamanic experience, really. I feel as happy with my patients as they do when they're healed. When they realize their own personal powers. And I'm very happy to expand that, to support this healing process. I don't want no people are healthy or healthy, but they're striving to be so. I just guide them. Thank you. Еще вопросы? Николай, what is your forecast for Russia? What will happen in the next 50 years or so? I think that Russia and the Russians are accumulating strong powers, the powers of the voices of the world. There will be peace. And where the peace is, the Russians will be strongly present. And then we'll have peace in the world, I believe. Nikolai, at the last festival you had on tour, where there were any strong insights from the shamanic vision, there were very good insights and suggestions to the ordinary public people how to improve themselves. There were many uh, master classes taught there and workshops. That was very helpful. And the shamans uh, shared a lot in this respect. I want to have this knowledge more uh, yeah. guided in a more practical um, field. I just wanted to share something about yeah, the uh, that I uh, listened a while ago. Uh, and, uh, and, uh, the the that you post, uh, the of Buddha, you know, being the moment that, that you have uh, to go. And, um, and, um, and uh, и Будды, и простым человеком вы задаете ваши правильные цели. У вас есть план достижения даже этих целей, об этом вы об этом забываете. И что, и что, и что по-моему, не, не важно, достигли ли вы конечной цели своей или нет, важен путь. Но важно задать направление, но бывает так, что вы забываете об этой цели, вы вот находитесь здесь и сейчас, и наслаждаетесь этим звуком, окутанным. Это Сирикум Рао как раз об этом учит, а как можно наслаждаться текущим моментом жизни. И, и цели тоже меняются вообще-то. Да. А какие-то есть еще вопросы из зала? Хорошо. Я думаю, сегодня был хороший, хороший сегодня обмен, интерактивный. Спасибо всем присутствующим в зале, а также, конечно, нашей высокой аудитории президиума.
I just want to remind you the soul of Europe at half past eight here. Я хотел просто напомнить, что самодеятельный so, концерт «Душа please, Европы» будет uh, по восьмого вечера. Me, uh, Кто хочет да, участвовать, song, dance, sketch, да, может быть, вы хотите появиться в песне.